In this short clip, I will explain the difference in the commonalities between probability mass functions for discrete random variables and probability density functions, which we use for continuous random variables. So let's look firstly at the case where we thought about discrete random variables. And let's think about a variable which is perhaps defined between 0 and 1, but could only take, let's say, only three outcomes. Perhaps it could only take value of 0, 0 0.5, and 1. What we would then do is we would represent this using a, um, yeah, a, a probability mass function. So perhaps we would say 0 outcome is this probability outcome of 0 0.5, this probability, and perhaps an outcome of 1, this probability. Now, the sum of all these bars would have to, these would all have to sum to 1. Okay, and that was sort of part of the definition of a probability distribution. Now, perhaps think about as a sort of transitional stage, think about a random variable where the outcome is on 0, or 0.5 and 1, but also on um, 0 0.1, or 0 0.2, or 0 0.3, or 0 0.4, all these different points. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here we are, 0.9. So that's 0.8, for instance. This here is 0.3. But we would still have discrete outcomes. So we'd now describe the, the same thing with um, perhaps a probability mass function, which perhaps looks a, a little bit like this. Okay, there could, of course, be all sorts of different probability mass functions. Perhaps it's very unlikely that we get very high outcomes here. And again, these red bars would have to sum to 1. Okay, the value of these now 11 red bars, they would all have to sum to 1. So here we had 11 outcomes, here we had 3 outcomes. So, and perhaps you can already see we could do, or there may be random variables still defined on the interval 0 and 1, but perhaps they have 100, 101 possible outcomes, okay? 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and so forth, all of these outcomes. And again, we could, of course, draw bars, okay? But they would be very thin bars now. And perhaps from there, it's not such a big conceptual step to think about a random variable, which we now call a continuous random variable, that is perhaps also defined on the interval between 0 and 1, but takes any possible value between 0 and 1, and perhaps including 0 and 1. We can't draw, if we have a continuous outcome, continuous, sorry, an infinite number of possible outcomes, because that's what we have, even though this is a bounded interval, we still have an infinite number of possible values. We can't draw an infinite number of bars. So what we now do is, instead of, we call this the probability mass function, we are now thinking of a probability density function, PDF. And perhaps that looks something like this. Okay, and then it would be zero to the left and to the right. So perhaps that is a probability density function, but there could be all sorts of different shapes. And let me just draw a couple of different shapes. You could have one which looks like this. Perhaps it drops down very, very steeply here. This is also a probability density function. So what is now for probability density function the equivalent to this rule for discrete random variables, the probability for all outcomes added up should be 1. Now, what we need is that the area underneath this PDF is equal to 1. So we need this area underneath here to be equal to 1. And equally, if we are, if we were working with the blue, PDF, then the area underneath this blue function had to be 1. Okay, so the areas 
have to be equal to one for this to be a valid probability uh, density function describing the properties of a continuous random variable. Now, of course, here we had this example where the random variable was defined between zero and one. Of course, your random variable could be defined from negative to plus infinity. And then you could perhaps have a random distribution function which looks like this. Okay, and this already has a shape of perhaps something that looks, we will later describe as a normal distribution. But still the same, the area underneath here has to be equal to one. So how do we now describe probabilities in this probability density function? And this is now quite different to probability mass functions, but the probability for continuous distributions, we cannot think anymore about probabilities for an individual outcome. Think about an outcome possible value here, A. Let's say we assigned some probability here. Now you have to recognize there's an infinite number of other possible outcomes. All of them will have possible prob uh, positive probability. Now, is there any way how we could assign a positive number to an infinite number of outcomes and then add them all up and there will only be one? They only add up to one? The answer is no, we can't do that. Therefore, the probability, if we call, let's say we call our random variable x, okay, the probability that x is equal to a particular value for a continuous random variable is always going to be zero. Okay. The way how we define probabilities in the context of continuous random variables is by intervals. We'll be asking for the probability that x is between a and b. Okay. And graphically, this probability is represented by the area underneath the PDF between these two values. This is now this probability. Okay. And since the area underneath the entire PDF is one, this area has to be smaller than one. So this is how we describe probabilities in continuous random variables. And this is sort of the properties, the key properties of probability density functions.